you, and welcome back to A Kid Explains History. Today, I have a pretty interesting subject, the Treaty of Versailles. You may see that it's spelled Versailles, but it's French, so yeah. Now, what is the Treaty of Versailles? Well, it was the treaty that ended World War I and effectively started World War II. So, you know, it's, it's a little important. You may ask, what's a treaty? Usually, it's two sides in a war agreeing how to end that war. Usually, there are some exceptions. It's kind of like a contract, but like ending a lot of death. Okay, so let's get into it. On June 28th, 1919, in the city of Versailles, which is in France, a treaty was signed. This treaty would set the stage for the rest of the 20th century. Not only did it change borders on a world scale, it would also change the political atmosphere, destroying entire countries. Okay, so I'm gonna do a basic overview on the main changes the treaty made. We'll go country by country. Oh, and one more thing. There are actually three treaties dealing with the three main central powers. Versailles was to deal with Germany, Server was to deal with the Ottoman Empire, and Trianon was to deal with Austria-Hungary. Yes, I'm starting with the Ottomans. Shocking, I know, but I do want to save Germany for last. Okay, so let's first talk about what the Ottoman Empire was. Well, today we know it as the country of Turkey. So basically it was Turkey, but bigger and an empire. Maybe I'll do an episode on it later. Anyway, so what happened to the Ottomans after World War I? They lost a lot, like all of their prized possessions. But before I get to the exciting territorial losses, we have to go into restrictions and reparations. So we all know what a restriction is, you know, you can't do that. But what's a reparation? Reparations are basically when the side who loses the war has to pay money to the winners for all the damages they caused. Obviously that depends on your point of view, but you know, there you go. Okay, well the treaty states that the Allied powers have full control over the Ottoman bank. In other words, the Ottomans' money wasn't theirs anymore, and before they did anything that cost money, they had to ask permission. <laughs> their army was only to have 50,700 men. Their navy was only to have around 13 boats, and they couldn't have an air force. The idea behind that is so it's all for defense only. In territorial losses, the French got Syria and a zone of influence. Greece got a zone of influence and some land. The Italians got some islands in southern Turkey, and the British got Palestine and Iraq. Many countries were also freed, such as Armenia. All right, so that's the Ottomans. So this time things are different. The Austro-Hungarian Empire was to be split into different countries. The main ones being Austria, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and Yugoslavia. Romania would get a lot more land, and so did a new country, Poland. I'm gonna have more to say about Poland in a minute because they become important with Germany. But before I move on, I do wanna talk about how much of Western Russia was freed after the Russian Civil War, which I have a video on right there. Lots of new countries came into being, like Lithuania, Estonia, and Latvia. Apart from that, Italy got some land as well, and not much happened to Austria. Moving on. Let me just say, Germany got hit hard. All of their colonies across the world in places like Africa were gifted to the British or French. Much of the Pacific colonies went to Japan, except for Papua New Guinea, which went to Australia. Alsace Lorraine went back to the French after they lost it in 1870. And the Rhineland, which is a part of Germany, was to be demilitarized, which means no troops can enter, and the French kind of owned it. Poland split Germany in half through the Polish corridor here. And places like Belgium and Luxembourg got land, as well as Denmark, and they weren't even in the war. Those were most of the territorial changes. Now time for restrictions and reparations. The army was restricted to 100,000 men. They could not make an air force at all, and the navy was cut down. But this is insane. Germany had to pay so much money in reparations, they went bankrupt. Also, a democratic government was instituted known as the Weimar Republic. This treaty was insane. There were a lot of people who disliked it at the time, including, um, y you know who. No one alive today knows exactly why the conditions were so harsh. Maybe the French won revenge for the Franco-Prussian War of 1870. Maybe people got a little greedy and enjoyed redrawing the map. But the Treaty of Versailles has become a case study in the theory of unintended consequences. I don't think the people who ended the war to end all wars intended for an even worse war to be started in 20 years. That's why you have to be careful. All right, we're done. Um, remember to like, share, subscribe. And apart from that, um, Tune in next time. I'll see you later. I'm going to go film the next episode now.